what a magnificent institution, UT. And I want to thank President Fenves, uh, who long before he assumed the leadership of this great public university, was an accomplished technologist and engineer. All the students here who've joined us today, thank you for your engagement, for your interest in subjects that matter to your future and our security. This morning I met with my longtime friend Bill McRaven, your chancellor, who, as you probably know, was changes the world. And just by being on campus this morning, I've seen some of what you're doing to make that a reality. After my visit with Bill, I stopped uh, over at UT's School of Social Work. And there I met a really impressive group of researchers who are tackling something that's important to us. I'll just mention it to you. Uh, but I was very impressed with the work there, and that's the scourge of sexual assault, uh, which is uh, on university campuses. It's particularly uh, offensive to us in the profession of arms, and we're determined to uh, beat it. Um, but I learned a lot, had an excellent exchange of information and ideas, and I'm grateful to the people I was with earlier this morning. And there's a point also in that, which is whether we're members of a prestigious university like this uh, or a proud and noble institution like our Department of Defense, we do encounter similar challenges. And we should share a common commitment, which is to create an environment where everybody's treated with the dignity and respect they deserve and we can get the best out of people. Now, additionally, later this afternoon, I'll visit an com advanced computing center and tour a laboratory where scientists and engineers are making advances in neuromuscular robotics and advanced data sciences and other fields. So just in one day, I'm seeing how determined people are here are at UT to think differently and deliver solutions to some of our most complex challenges. Every day, we're challenging ourselves to do the same in the Department of Defense. We have to, given the complex and multiple threats we face. Not just ISIL, which we will defeat, and we'll, but also North Korea, which is among other things firing ballistic missiles, Russia, among other things, illegally annexing Crimea. China, attempting to change the calculus in the South China Sea. And Iran, continuing to export malign influence. We need the best talent America has to offer to meet these challenges and carry forward our responsibilities. And as Secretary of Defense, I have the privilege of leading the finest fighting force the world has ever known. But that's not a birthright. It's not a guarantee. We have to earn it again and again. And I have to pass it on to those who come after me so they have the same privilege that I have. And to ensure that that force of tomorrow remains as great as the force of today, we in the Pentagon are needing to think, as I tell our folks, outside of our five-sided box about the kinds of uh, solutions and the kinds of careers and the kinds of challenges and the kinds of opportunities that will make the very best, like those represented in this room, continue to join our great institution. And I'm proud that uh, so many of you sitting in front of me have already made a decision to be part of this enterprise, which to me is the noblest thing you can do. To the large number of ROTC cadets with us today, I look forward to welcoming you as members of the Department of Defense community. What you've chosen is consequential, makes a great difference, helping to defend one's country and build a better world. There's nothing better to wake up to than being part of that mission. And pretty soon, you'll be assuming the awesome responsibilities of leadership, the responsibility of ensuring that our citizens, as well as men and women across the world, have the security they need to dream their dreams, raise their families, live lives that are full. That's what it's all about. And whether you're part of ROTC or not, whether you're a senior or a sophomore, you one, might be wondering 
about the world you'll be entering into. And there's no question about it. You're living during a time of incredible change and challenge in a lot of parts of the world. Every time you turn on the television or surf the internet, it seems to be some new reason to be apprehensive about the world that awaits you. And when you see the kind of horrendous attacks ISIL carried out in Brussels, you might ask yourself, what can you do? I hope you ask yourself, what can you do? How can you make a difference? How can you be part of something bigger than yourself? And it's a world of opportunities, too. Wonderful, bright opportunities to leave a better world for future generations. Now, I admit, I didn't actually think much about national security when I was where you are. I was all wrapped up in physics, uh, history, separately, by the way. <laughs> Although the joke people make about me is that I'm now, I'm now living the perfect marriage of physics and medieval things, <laughs> sports. But that changed a few years later when I listened to a speech about the future tech of technology in the military. It helped me realize that I could make a difference, that I knew something, I could make a difference, and that it would be in something of great consequence. Those of you who are in ROTC are preparing to become great warriors, but like all students here today, you're also scientists, thinkers, programmers, writers, mathematicians, social scientists, much, much more. And every day, each of you helps to crack the code in some way, and we need to keep you doing so, so that America retains its great strength, its great strength as an incubator of ideas and innovation, because that, second only to our people, is what makes our military the greatest. For those of you who won't be going into the military but may want to advance our mission and keep our nation secure, we're continuing to find additional opportunities for you to do so, for you to make a contribution. One year and one day ago, barely a month after I became Secretary of Defense, I went back to my old high school in Philadelphia and I laid out my commitment to this building of the force of the future, as I called it, the all-volunteer force, because that's what we have, that will defend our country in future generations. Part of the reforms and the investments we're making in that force of the future initiative involve finding ways for more of our citizens, including students like you, either in uniform or in some other way, to contribute to our mission. In fact, a critical part of building the force of the future starts with what we're doing for students like you to improve and enhance our internship programs, to make them more effective at transitioning promising interns into productive professionals at the Department of Defense. That's how we get good people in, give, get them to give us a try. And when they do that, many of them find that the, the, the meaning of being part of our mission is something, as I found, not too much older than you were, that I couldn't resist being a part of. Now, as part of that, we're also bringing in more of America's best and most innovative minds. And that's why we created the Defense Digital Service, to bring in expertise from America's technology community, just to work for a specific time on a specific project. Give it a try. Maybe some of the computer science majors here can come on board for a few months or for a few specific projects. Perhaps they can even wear a hoodie, like where is, is I, uh, Chris Lynch is here. Hey, Chris, where are you? The, the director of the D Defense Digital Service. Where are you, Chris? Let's Chris back there. The only person in the Pentagon who wears a hoodie every day. <laughs> but he, he runs our, our Defense Digital Service, which is just what it says, which is people like Chris who are able to come in and work for a time. And that's okay, even if they only come in for a time and then go out again and then maybe come back in again. It's a tremendous source for us of uh, fresh ideas. And for them, it's a tremendous opportunity to contribute to this great mission. As we've introduced reforms and investments to build this force of the future, we've all, we're always also mindful of the fact that we are different. We are the profession of arms. We're not a business. We're responsible for defending this country, providing the security that allows everyone else, all of you and your parents and your friends and your fellow citizens, 
to go to school, to go to work, and to one day provide a better future for the next generation. While the military cannot and should not replicate all aspects of the private sector, we can and should and are borrowing practices, technologies, and management techniques that work for us so that in future generations we'll keep attracting people of the same high caliber we have today, people who meet the same high standards of performance and ethics and honor and trust we hold our force to today. We're making these investments and pushing forward with these reforms for one simple reason, so that the force of tomorrow can remain as strong as the force of today. And to make that possible, we need more talented and dedicated people like you, men and women who are committed to making creative and lasting contributions to our national defense. The opportunities you've had here at the University of Texas, those opportunities will soon become your obligations. In a short period of time, you have to put your talents and your skills to a productive and practical use. And I have complete confidence in your ability to make the most of your world-class education here. In fact, there may be a future Bill McRaven among the ROTC candidates here in the audience, or a Nobel Prize winning scientist, perhaps even a future Secretary of Defense. Wherever your career takes you, though, I'm confident you'll be driven by the desire to be something larger than yourself. That's where the call to service begins. And it's my great hope that each and every one of you, in some way or another, will seek it out. It's been a privilege to be here on this campus, to be among you now, get a little chance to chat with you now and hear your questions. But uh, I'm looking at the eyes out there, and I'm hoping that I'm going to, some, some people are or maybe even today, maybe even just as a consequence of this encounter today, will tip you over. Give us a try in one way or another. I guarantee you'll find it one of the most rewarding things you can do with the wonderful lies that you all have ahead of yourselves. Let's, let's